From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Tony Ricardo. Oh, I've been hoping to get in touch with Did you. Did you receive my note? Was that your polite threat to kill me if I don't leave Carol Sharp alone? Yeah, I received it. And I have a sneaking suspicion the police department might be interested in no. it. No. Oh, please, I... I guess I acted a bit hastily. Perhaps you let me talk to you. You want to take the threat back? That still stands. Then you don't leave me much choice. Talk to me first. Believe me, you won't be sorry. But I might be dead. Is that it? I want to see you. Can't do it now, but where can I reach you? Sunrise 3, 9970. Okay. Meantime, don't get trigger happy. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New York City. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the matter of the medium. Well done. Expense account item 7, 85 cents. Cab fare from the Bell Towers to the 18th Precinct Station and Sergeant Randy Singer. So, you met Carol Sharp, huh? Yep. I put on an act that would have done credit to the theater guild. <laughs> told her she looked exactly like a girl I dreamed about as a kid, a girl named Carol. Oh, no. She swallowed it? Not only that, but she gave me a lecture on veridical dreams and allied psychic phenomena. <laughs> you deserve an Oscar. Also, she wants me to go with her and see this Madame Morgana Morgana. Oh, good. When? Tomorrow night. Well, you're not figuring on skipping tonight's seance, are you? Oh, no, not a bit. I want to find out what this stuff is all about, so I'll be prepared for tomorrow. Uh, this dame you have lined up pretty good? She's got a big following. You ready to go? Oh, wait a minute. You said you have the file on Tony Ricardo. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is, waiting for you. Ah, Anthony Ricardo, alias Ricky Marino, alias Tony the Tip. There, here's his picture. Height 5'9", weight 172, eyes brown, hair sparse gray, suspected member of the Dutchie Sperling outfit, 12 arrests, no conviction, started as a rum runner back. Hey, this is Tony Ricardo? It's the guy. Hmm, I would have sworn the man I talked to over the phone was in his 20s. Late 20s at most. You talked to him? After leaving an unpleasant little note under my door at the towers, he called me on the phone. Now, what kind of note? Oh, nothing particular. Just a gentle suggestion I lay off Carol Sharp. Threat, huh? Still got it? But I'm sure that voice couldn't have come from this old geezer. Yeah, well, frankly, I kind of wondered about the Sharp girl being interested in him, even though the file does show he's always surrounded himself with a bunch of young ones. He, you know, he's probably handed out more mink coats. Oh, Johnny, yeah, wait a minute. Uh, old Tony's got a couple of kids. Here, Angela. Goes under the name of Angela Richards. At least she used that name at Bryn Mawr. Bryn Mawr? Yeah, and Sarah Lawrence College at Bronxville. Yeah, the old boy tried to keep the stigma of his past away from her, I guess. Yeah, you see, uh, married to a doctor over in Hackensack. Respectable housewife. Mm hmm. Uh, what about the other? Anthony Jr., age 26. That was uh, last year. Let's see, that makes him 27. Now, Rutgers University, class. Not much on him. Unless I miss my guess, he's a chip off the old block. Now, you know where I can find him? All I have is his phone number. What is it? Wait till I see and talk to him. Yeah, that may be too late. He's what I think he is. Why not ask this medium about him tonight? Yeah, that... Hey, come on, we're late. Let's go. Item 8, $1. twenty. Cab to an old brownstone house somewhere over in the West 40s. Way west in a district that had seen better days. We were greeted at the door by a tall, gray-haired old gentleman, dressed in black, except for his white gloves, that somehow reminded me of a pallbearer. Come in, Mr. Singer and Mr. Dollar. Clarabelle is about to begin. Psychometry is the mood this evening. Follow, please. How do you know our names? I had to give them to him when I made the appointment. What's this uh, psychometry business? You'll see. Wow. Music gives me the creeps. Yeah, I... Shh. Into the temple, please. And be seated. The temple turned out to be an old dining room. Bare wooden floor, heavy drapes over the windows. And as nearly as I could see, a bunch of chairs around in a circle filled with people. 
The sockets in the ancient chandelier that hung from the ceiling had red bulbs in them that barely glowed. Oh, we could hardly see a thing, although I'm sure the light went up very slightly when we made our entrance and then down again, as though somebody was controlling it with a rheostat. Our eyes were almost used to the semi-darkness by the time we seated ourselves in the circle. Nobody spoke. And the weird music from that scratchy record was beginning to get on my nerves or put me to sleep or something. I'm not quite sure what. Then, suddenly, there was a flash of light and a puff of smoke. And so help me... What the sack? Randy! Shh, quiet. This is all part of the act. Shh. Greetings. Greetings, Greetings. Greetings, friends of the unknown, friends of the mystics, of Botan the Indian boy, and the seventh son of the seventh son of Harry Schnoo the mighty. And there she stood, in the center of the circle where the flash had gone off. Are we all in the mood? She stood there draped in what looked, even in the dim light, what looked like a slightly soiled bed sheet, pulled in around her ample middle with a hunk of coarse rope. She wore a sort of turban, or maybe it was just an old dish towel wrapped around her head. A faint odor of gin pervaded the room. I guess her feet were bare, for she made no noise as she walked slowly around the circle, holding on a shallow metal tray. Taking a collection so soon, I wondered? Each of you... Place upon the tray some object very close to you. Something you have had a long, long time that has become a part of you. Huh? Shh, you'll get it back. And if the spirits are with us and there are no dissenting minds among us, if Botan, the Indian boy from the world beyond, is willing to act as our control, we shall learn many strange things this night. Place something close to you upon the tray. Uh, will this watch me on? You must not speak, but keep the mood. Keep the mood. Are we all in the mood? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. And now, dear friends, while I meditate and establish contact with the spirit world, Hemingway will pass among you for the tiny assurance that you join us in all sincerity. Now join hands to create the flux that will join our thoughts and minds and hearts and open the doors to enlightenment for all of us. Five dollars. Botan, are you with us tonight? Five dollars, please. Botan, will you answer Five us? Five dollars, please. Are you with us now? Is that Botan that answers our call, or the little sister, Hyacinth? Ah, it is Botan. We may begin. I hold this ring. I feel the paramagnetic forces arising from it. This belongs to a businessman south of here. I seem to see clothing hanging in a large warehouse. Yes, yes. And the sound of many machines, sewing machines. Yes, yes, that's right. And many young girls working at the machines. One by one, she picked the objects off the tray, held them in her hand, and gave a kind of character reading with the owners. Occasionally, somebody in the circle would respond in a way that made it sound like she'd guessed right. Other times, she'd just make with a lot of generalities that could apply to anyone. Finally, she picked up my watch. This watch. I see tall buildings of stone and strange signs on them. I don't know what they mean. Try mutual universal adjustment. Huh? Randy. And I see great sheaves of papers carefully folded. And on each one it says, policy. Policy. I don't understand unless... Insurance, yes. This is fantastic. Wait till she gets to one I put there. The watch is from a young man. Clever, energetic. I will have many things to tell him at another time. But he must see me again. Often. And now, this other object that lay beneath the watch. I see a police badge. The cops! Oh, I told you. Dirty crooks, the cops are on to us. We're being raided. Get him out of here. Get him away. 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 Get him Take your filthy hands off me. Let me out of here. You're not going anywhere until I have a talk with you. Anyway, 
ditched me, ran out on me. I might have known he would at a pinch. There isn't going to be a pinch if you'll just shut up and stand still a minute. I wasn't doing no harm, honest officer, and, and all the money goes to charity. All right, all right, settle down. Where's the light switch? Got it, Randy. I'll never live this down. Now, look, officer. You look, Clarabelle. All we want is some answers to some questions. And you won't pinch me? Not if you tell the truth. Johnny? Yeah. Just how did you know so much about me? It certainly wasn't from holding that watch. Okay, so it wasn't. Though some there are who can do it that way. That I've heard. Well, go on. No pinch? No pinch. Well, when your friend called to arrange a being here tonight, Henningway... That bum, he would walk out on me. Go on, would you? Well, Henningway asked where you come from, so we'd know if the spirits was propitious there. That's what we always say. And I told him Hartford. That's right. So what's Hartford? Insurance. If a client's in insurance, he responds like you done. So I keep pushing it. And if he ain't, well, at least he thinks I done pretty good by describing the place he comes from. Yeah. What about the clothing maker right at the beginning? (laughs) Easy. He called from a hotel, so he calls the hotel back and gets his address. You told him he was from the south of here. Sure. Woodbine, New Jersey. Only business down there of any account is clothing and small farms. Where'd you find that at? State directory, any library... And anybody could see he was a businessman, not a farmer. Well, I'll be. And hooking him that way tonight, you could have had him coming back as long as he could afford it, huh? Sure. And if it hadn't been for you, you okay, double cross. Okay, okay. Now, what about the others? Some we get the dope on and some we guess at. But there's always enough good ones to keep going. So easy. And yet, I must confess she'd had me stop for a while. We talked with her a bit longer. Randy warned her to watch her step and we left. Took a taxi back to my hotel. Well, did you learn anything? I should hope to tell you. What did the church-going spiritualists think of her kind? They hate him, and I don't blame him. Hmm. Are you still going to see Madame Morgana Morgana tomorrow night? Hmm, yeah. Well, mister, that one won't be so easy to expose, if you can expose her. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the medium well done appears. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.